What's up guys? Welcome back to the worst homestead on YouTube, the Hillbilly Homestead. By the end of this video, you will know how to make salsa and like all my videos, it takes longer for me to film them than actually do the work. And we're doing a little bit more technical stuff today. It might actually take longer to do the doing, but the effort for me is doing all the work. So it's, it's very easy. You should be able to follow along at home. Uh, we're gonna have some links down below to Amazon stuff that we have. This stuff's extremely expensive if you have the base stuff. But normally this is stuff I'm doing in August, right? Can everything in August. And here are all the tomatoes. These we got from a farmer's market. The rest we grew. This is what we picked today. Uh, and we're just letting them green up on the vine. We're doing some trimming, some stuff back. This year, my fiance and I decided that it would be the year of the sauce. All right, guys, one of the very first things that we do, and I do this at my work, I've done this at all the companies I've run overseas, 300 workers, five workers, whatever. Before any project, before the workday starts, we do something called 3S. We prep what we want for the day, we clean everything, we sweep, sort, and standardize before we do things. And so I am going to perform a sweep. I'm gonna clear off everything on the counters that is in my way that I do not want, except for the things that are gonna be at the task at hand, which is canning. That may not seem like a big deal, but it will way make it easier for you, right? You have all this stuff in the kitchen, things that just, you need them for the day-to-day, -day, but you don't need them for this project. Move them out of the way if you can. All right, that's the first one. That sweep, clear the counters, actually wipe things down and prep them. The next thing you're gonna do is called sort. What does sort mean? Sort doesn't just mean organize, that's wrong. Sort is very important, it means you will arrange things from most used, closest to you, to least used. This is gonna be an assembly line. So I'm actually doing something. I'm going to be taking processing things. If I can think a little bit now, it might take 15 minutes to set up beforehand, do a little bit of thinking on the front end, boom, to the next process, to the next process. Actually, that I skipped over that middle one. These two are gonna be flip flop. We're gonna go down the assembly line and think through it. What's first used? What's second used? What are the order of operations? If you spend five to 10 minutes thinking and sorting now, later, you are not going to have to worry. It's gonna be a breeze. And the last thing of the S's is standardize. What are we standardizing? Well, two years ago, I said I'd standardize to wide mouth lids. Why? Because wide mouth lids don't have a shoulder, they're easier to clean. So this year, don't talk about it, be about it. I'm getting rid of all these. I'm gonna be getting rid of all of the regular mouth lids. Now, why do I still have regular mouth lids? Well, when I first got into everything, I was super excited, right, got my honey right here. I was uh, in the middle of COVID, and uh, COVID was going on, supply chains were crunched. I took what I had. Now that's over, I have time to standardize and prep, right? Just because there is a right way doesn't mean that we have to always follow it. Sometimes things like a global pandemic can't throw that off. But I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys watch me clean all this up and prep, we'll get to it right now. All right, we got an overview of what the tomatoes are going on. Now, the reason I do not have the peppers in there is because I need a ratio. And because this is what I grew, I'm gonna start here. These are San Marano uh, tomatoes. These are basically specifically for sauces and pastes. And then I've got miscellaneous cherry tomatoes in there, some slicers, and then just other kind. These are golden uh, sugar bust or something like that. I can't remember. So many people don't like using cherry tomatoes because they say it messes things up. Well, you know what? You got articulate blades that go that will take care of your problem with the edge. So we're gonna go and get to it right now. All right, guys, let's talk recipe. No, stop, don't talk recipe, talk ratio. What is the ratio? Okay, why talk about ratios? Well, Asian cuisine is very similar to Mexican cuisine, meaning that you should go off of a ratio, not necessarily off of a specific recipe, right? Super wiggle room in there, why? Because most cuisines that are, are about poor people food and poor people have what they have on hand, what we have on hand. So here's the ratio in general, right? You're the cilantro for now. You're gonna want a two to one ratio. So if you have three plum, right, San Manzano cherries, you're gonna wanna have about that much, double that of an onion, double that of a jalapeno, and then one clove, right? So what does that look like? Well, let's say, you know, we got one of these guys and one of these guys, okay? Um, we might need to add a little bit more of these two. Well, what if we have, don't have that kind of tomato? Tomato. What if we have a bunch of cherry tomatoes? Well, I think you know where we're going with this, right? You're gonna want a two to one ratio of that ingredient and one clove for that ratio. All right, so when we get to grilling, 
right? We're gonna take all this, we're gonna throw it in this guy right here, and we're gonna get the ratio in cups. From there, we're then gonna adjust this in the onion count, right? This is a jalapeno pepper. I'm gonna use the spicy peppers to get me a one-to-one -one ratio, but once I hit my spice level, I'm then gonna switch over to these sweet peppers, so I still have the pepper consistency for the good salsa, but I do not have, I'm not crying or dying through this stuff. Guys, I have an optional tip for you. If you want it, you can take these bad boys, and this is a super secret sauce that a Texas pit master taught me once. Roast your tomatoes. Throw them in the oven at 400 degrees for a little bit, or you take these bad boys, throw them on a smoker, 400 degrees, and smoke these bad boys for a few minutes, about 30, 20, 30 minutes, and then throw them in the processor. Now, I'm gonna do that to all my peppers here. And so based on that peppers, I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in there, and I'm gonna roast those so that you can get a nice charred flavor, but I'm gonna get these measured and weighed out first. All right, you can use a dicer. Now, this works very well. I'm gonna point, the more you pulse this, the finer everything's gonna get, and I like chunky salsa. Noted, there's about five cups in here, right? And so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the five cups in here. Keep track of everything. I'm gonna keep right back at it and keep on making it. I just want to keep the chunks. I don't want to puree it to nothing. You can probably avoid that by cutting it into quarters, right? Cutting the onions into quarters. And the less you pulse, the more you're gonna get out of it. The larger the chunks are gonna be, right? Here, I'll demonstrate that for a second here. Once or twice. Boom. All right, so that was one second. About two cups, if I really want to. Look how much chunkier that is. Five went in, two cups went in, so that's seven. Again, I need 10 and a half, so I'm gonna keep going until I'm there. All right, guys, so the moment that you know how much tomato sauce you have, I'm doing step two now. You might have already been able to do this if you already know the ratios of tomatoes you have. I'm gonna take the peppers, cut them, core them, I'm gonna throw them in the oven at 450 before I do the onions, and then I'll go after it, and then that way we're in good shape. And while that's happening, we have the, everything's preheating and all that good stuff. And there it is, we're at 379. Uh, these are all good to go, but, so I'm gonna go ahead and just open this guy up, pop this in for a nice little roast. Black and bis, look at that, look how beautiful that is. Now, Again, I did the order of operations wrong, did the onions first. This entire time, this could have been prepped, done, and we could be processing the onions right now. Um, but that was an oversight. Again, think ahead, I did not, and so I'm paying the price. All right, guys, so it's been about 20 minutes now. We got all of our ingredients in here, except for the peppers. Look at this, pleased to see we are starting to get some browning and blackening. Look at that, some roasted flavor in there. You know what, we'll leave this in there for another five minutes. All right guys, as those peppers are finishing up, we're gonna move on to the next step and we're gonna prep for the cannon. Yeah, you know what's up, we're cannon. All right, so this is actually a Magic Seal canner, which is from like the 30s or something like that. It's wild, it's cast aluminum, who knows how good it is. Uh, the company was later bought by Presto. I would just recommend that you buy a canner like this or the one I have linked down below in the description instead of buying one in a garage sale, not trusting it, refurbishing it for, at the end, the same cost was basically, I don't know, about the same cost too. Like for 30 bucks more, 20 bucks more, I could have had that. Anyways, all right, long and short of it is, how much water do you put in your canner? Well, the correct answer is check your effing manual. But I'm too lazy to check my effing manual. So the rule of thumb is uh, three inches. Well, three inches conveniently is half of a dollar. All right, so half a dollar, fold it in half, that's three inches. And you need to make sure that you fill it up beforehand. All the science and all the stuff is done with before the jars are in there. Now, three inches is what you need make sure this is gonna be a safe boil. The larger the pot, the smaller the pot, blah, blah, blah. All the science is based off of, and all the temperatures roughly is exactly what your pot says. But you should be pretty safe if you get three inches prior to putting stuff in it. So we're gonna get that prepped as we're waiting for the peppers to finish. All right, guys, we give this a hair more time. Now let's take a peek at it. Bam. All right, guys, very simple. Just as before, I'm going to take the roasted peppers, get the 10.5 cups, throw it in there, and we'll be ready to go. All right, guys, at this point, this is where you make it your own. 
All right, and the ratios are over. So now you have Abuela's recipe or your recipe or you modify it. You're gonna find out whatever Abuela's recipe was, probably very close to what this is. Um, at this point in time, we're gonna be adding in our specialty stuff. So I'm gonna be adding in a whole bunch of cumin and I'm gonna do that to taste because I, I like that. I'm gonna be adding in some garlic salt, right? We had the cilantro go in, all that good stuff. Boom, garlic salt to taste. What about pepper? I like pepper, bam. This should go on for a while. Got tons of pepper. I'm gonna do some vinegar, or to make it more salty, I'm gonna do some lemon. So I'm gonna do it right now. All right, so as I'm just kind of working on this guy here, bam, let's get some citrus flavor in. Mmm, that's good. And then I'm gonna throw a cup of garlic in, which is, or sorry, a cup of white vinegar. And that's gonna raise the acidity level. Now, why am I doing that last little bit. Well, because I'm gonna be canning the bulk of this. Now, at this point in time, this is basically salsa. It is 100% ready to go. If you wanna go ahead and eat it, you are good to go. This is as far as you wanna go. You don't wanna can anything. You flavor this to what you want. Mmm, I'm a salsa boy. So come winter time, I'm gonna want some of this garden fresh salsa from our own garden. So I'm gonna be canning this. So you're gonna see that next. If you are done, then let me know what else you wanna see. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep rolling and you're gonna see how to can this so you can love your salsa, have it in the debt, freezing. When it's, when it's January or February and you're cold, you can warm yourself up some of this delicious, chunky salsa. Woo! So I'm gonna get to it right now. now I'm using a pressure canner, it's gonna get it up. You can do low pressure canning with hot water bath and you gotta make sure of the salt level and then you gotta make sure all kinds of stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the high pressure canner. And so you're gonna see me go ahead and start with that. Put you guys in position here and you guys can kinda just follow along. All right, so really simple stuff, guys. Pop this off. This goes in here, and that's just for sterilization purposes. Putting this right here. I'm going to load can, load can, load can, load can. Not having to think about it very much. Guys, very simply, this is gonna be an assembly line. Uh, I know I have this laid out, right? You're watching me take steps right now, but I'm effectively boiling those guys, setting the salsa cans right here. Now, what is this? This is gonna be used to make sure that there's no air pockets. And in a moment, it's gonna be used to magnet these up. Right now, we're not worrying about that. But these canners take the same amount of time regardless of what you're doing. And so I'm gonna just keep rocking and rolling with this here. Effectively, you could save time and fill it up to the shoulder, leaving about an inch of space. Bam. You wanna keep about an inch of head space there, no problems. Clean the rim off. Take one of these guys here. Now it's been boiling and sanitary. Very carefully plop it down, snug, and then I back off. So it's loosely on there. I'm gonna drop this guy in, bam. As far as lids go, I try to keep it with the same lids. Guys, the rest of my evening is gonna be clean up. This all in all, most of the time, I think I spent like 30 minutes roasting, uh, took the longest, but it was probably all in all 35 minutes of work and then the time for roasting. Um, that's the actual time to make the salsa. It was fantastic, currently being enjoyed. Um, the canning process, you guys can watch videos and canning. I don't wanna go too much into it because each canner is different. The principles are the same, but again, consult the manual that you have. I have links below in the description for all the tools and whatnot you have. All in all, you know, you think back to a simpler time, you think back to your grandma's time, your mother's time, where people had these skills to preserve food into the winter. It's July, I have a decent, the, the tomato harvest is just starting. This is the most prepared year I've ever had. And so I'm gonna keep rocking and rolling. The other thing is I'm using a very general um, salsa recipe. So I can also turn it into a pasta sauce, right? Uh, let's say it comes winter, I want pasta one day, pull the salsa out, throw in some extra tomato paste, boil it down, boom, chunky, delicious, uh, kind of a bright, kind of a zesty uh, pasta sauce right there. There's all kinds of things you guys can do. Uh, if you like this kind of content, like, subscribe, check everything else out. Again, everything about my channel is to make it easiest for you to make your dollar stretch the furthest if possible to do the least amount of effort, but do the, but get the most amount of gain. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Remember, none of this is hard. Go out there, grow something. We'll see you next time. Bum 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 bum